you want it, make me give it to you. Use the voice. Dune 2021 is a part one of Frank Hubert novel adaptation by the same name. The first novel of Dune saga was published in 1965, and it's considered the greatest science fiction novel of all time, spawning five more books from the franchise. Dune novels inspired many modern sci-fi films such as Star Wars. Being considered the most difficult book to adapt, the first adaptation of Dune, directed by David Lynch, failed to capture the book story and lacked some parts of source material. Decades after the first film adaptation, Denis Villeneuve took the direction of Dune 2021. Denis Villeneuve is considered one of the finest directors working today, with his finest work like Sicario, Arrival, Blade Runner 2049 and many others. He really didn't disappoint it with this film as well. With the technology and visual effects in films being already advanced enough, uh, what seemed to be impossible to adapt nowadays seems to be possible. So this review is going to be split with multiple chapters with their own categories and while I'm going to review the movie, I'll try to throw some uh, funny gags and some jokes in the in order to make this review um, a little more interesting, so I hope you don't mind. So with that said, sit back, relax, grab something to eat and drink. This is Dune 2021 review. And by the way, spoilers ahead. The movie tells a story about a young prodigy, 25-year-old called Paul Atreides. Hmm, I think it was the Zhao and Shin that makes him younger. I, I don't know. You, you decided. He's the son of Lady Jessica and Duke Leto Atreides. They live in a planet called Caladan. Lady Jessica was trained by a powerful group called Ben Gesserit Sisters kinda like the great beards from the Skyrim. To use the ability called The Voice, also kinda remind me like Skyrim. Basically, in other words, Paul is the Dragonborn, Lady Jessica is the Mama Dragonborn, and the Bene Gesserit sisters are the female version of Greybeards. Oh god, please somebody stop me with this shit. The Emperor's Messenger kicks the evil Arconic from the planet Dune and puts the Atreides in charge of the desert planet of Arrakis. Arrakis is a desert planet that contains spice. Spice is used in these gen ships to make uh, the small ships travel to one planet to another. Also, Spice is used as a consumable product that gives you blue eyes that all the Fremen has. Fremen are the local people who live in Arrakis. Uh, this Spice is kinda like drug. Once you will start consuming it, you must continue to consume it. If you will stop consuming it, you'll die. But however, there was a twist on this plan. The reason that the Emperor kicks the Arconing out of the planet of Arrakis is because they actually planned this all along. The reason is to trap all the Atreides inside of this desert planet and simply eliminate all of them. Once the Atreides arrived and the night struck, the Arconan and the Empire attacked the Atreides. Dragonborn and Mama Dragonborn got captured by the Harkonnen. No, no, I mean seriously, just look at this! That 
if this doesn't remind you like Skyrim. <laughs> anyway, also I forgot to mention about the famous scene where Paul is tested by the leader of Je Bene Gesserit sisters by putting the Gonja Bar needle in his neck while he puts uh, a hand in the box. So it, it, it's just so epic. Long story short, the writing for me is absolutely 10 out of 10. Some parts that it's clearly an exposition for the audience without being too obvious that it's an exposition. The dialogue looks organic and it doesn't feel like cheesy overall. The dialogue of the movie it's really it, it really works for me, it's uh, absolutely brilliant. The only complaint that I have is splitting one book into two. Sometimes can be for cash grab reasons like the Hobbit trilogy, um, which I, I already covered this type of video uh, previously. So sometimes this can be in case of Dune, uh, because Dune it's a very complex book to adapt and without mention that it's a very long one and in in this case it will make sense to split into two because there's so many characters um, and sometimes the characters they are too complex to pronounce their names okay they, they are really 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 complex In my personal opinion, uh, every actor did an amazing job, especially Josh Brolin, Oscar Isaac, Javier Bardem, Jason Momoa, and especially Stellan Skarsgård. Um, Zendaya acted like Zendaya, you know, as well as Timothy Chalamet. There were a few moments that Timothy lacked of emotion, maybe uh, maybe because of the this one-dimensional modern acting nowadays, but for me at least Timothy is more convincing Paul Trades than Kyle McLa Ma Ma McLan Oh my fucking god, well Kyle McLachlan. I genuinely love it uh, Stellan Skarsgård performance as Baron Harkonnen. He delivered an excellent performance and he looks really intimidating as a villain. Uh, very different from what we get from Dune 1984. Also, Jason Momoa's acting was much better in this movie. Someone finally given him a character that can distance from, you know, his typical personality from other films. Uh, this is for me his best performance of his career, period. Overall, the characters of the movie feel distinct from one another, uh, no one has the same robotic personality like so many other films, and I'm gonna give the acting a 9 out of 10. I give the 9 out of 10 because of some parts of Timothy Chalamet when he needed to act like more desperate and worried and he just simply felt like, uh, felt, just felt like a robot, but yeah, but the rest is just fine. Dune 2021 cin cinematography looks and feels big and epic. Unlike the 1984 adaptation, in Dune 2021 you can clearly see where each location is. Caladan looks blue, red, green and yellow, while Arrakis looks yellow and orange. In 1984 uh, I had difficulties to distinguish colors when they are in Caledon or in Arrakis. When I saw for the first time uh, Dune 1984, I could not distinguish when they are already in uh, Arrakis or they still stand in Caledon. Uh, I had so many difficulties and also I saw this when I was a kid but <laughs> yeah anyway. Overall the cinematography for Dune is for me no doubt 10 out of 10 and it's a very Oscar worthy. The sets of Dune 2021 were real and practical. Uh, few green or blue screen was used during the production. Uh, I can't be sure, but there was no scene that felt fake for me. I also tried to see every single shot 
to spot any noticeable green screen shot. Surprisingly, I could find it. The sets of the film was well made and I definitely gonna make, give it a 10 out of 10. The visual and practical effects of Dune was well made. I love when movies combine visual effects with practical effects, especially the interior shot of flying dragonfly helicopter It's 100% practical. The ship design looks weird and cool at the same time. I love the size of the ship comparison from the moment that leaves the space guild mothership to moment when he lands just to show how small we are and how big the space can be it's just amazing i also love the shield effect in the film it's less minecrafty version than 1984's version i love the design of sandworm creature for me it looks much better and very intimidating and very and can be very scary and poses a genuine threat and danger for the people who steps in the sand of Arrakis. Overall, the visual effects and practical effects of Dune looks really amazing and for me, again, it's uh, definitely an Oscar worthy for visual effects achievement and I'm gonna give it the visual effects a 9 out of 10. If you're asking yourself why 9 out of 10, it because of one specific scene that it didn't convince me much, uh, so this scene right here, it just, just, it felt fake for me, okay, so yeah, the, but the rest is just fine, just this scene. Uh, very quick, I wanted to talk about the dress and makeup. It just looks absolutely fantastic, especially the Vladimir Harkonnen's makeup, it, it just look very realistic and the prosthetic body that Stellan Skarsgård spent hours to being implemented on him, it, I think it was worth it, okay, it, it's, it looks incredibly amazing and they did an, a great job, it's definitely, an, again, an Oscar worthy job, okay. Uh, also, I don't know if blue eyes of framing are contact lenses or visual effect, but yeah, I'm gonna give it 10 out of 10. I decided to leave the music chapter as the last chapter because it, there's a there's a few things to talk about it, okay? Hans Zimmer has proven himself to be the master of blockbuster music next to many other film composers. I highly appreciate the effort that he gave to the project. Hell, he even turned it down to compose for the movie Tenet from his long collaborator Christopher Nolan to work on Dune because he was a huge fan of the books. That is a real love showing into the project. Despite not being his best, the music fits amazing in the scenes and for the film itself. From the drums and percussions playing in the beginning, from the guitars and the synthesizers playing while the Atreides ships were leaving Caledon, which just gave me shivers just by hearing the music, the unique way to implement the Mongolian voice to represent the Shardukar army and my favorite is the bike pipe instrument played during the arrival of Atreides in Arrakis and while they starting running into the battle. What I feel predictable from Hans Zimmer is implementing the female choir voice that sometimes feel a feels a little bit overused thanks to the Snyder Cut because of Justice League. While Wonder Woman is on screen every time, it is just, this is just fucking annoying. If it wasn't that, I will give it 10 out of 10, but for that, I'll give it 8 out of 10. At least I can hear the dialogue very well in the music. Yes, I look at it, you done it!
Dune 2021 is a small taste on what is about to come to the franchise if the general audience will demand more. This is just the first part of adaptation from the first book. I can't wait to see how they gonna conclude the second part of the book. Until then, we just wait for it and my final ver verdict of Dune 2021 it's a solid 8 out of 10. This is without a doubt a, a modern masterpiece of cinema and it really deserves to be preserved in the hall of the cinema. Well, anyway, that's it for my review. This is my review of Dune 2021. Um, uh, it took me a lot of time to make this video uh, and I highly appreciate it to stick with me until the end. Um, if you enjoyed this review, um, don't forget to, to leave a like. And what do you think? If, if you saw already Dune, leave a comment down below. Uh, what do you think about the, the this film? If, if you saw already the previous version of Dune, like the 1984, and you already saw the this one, leave a comment down below what do you think. Um, I, 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 I believe so many people were going to say that this one is a vast superior. I, I really agree. I did like it a lot. Um, so yeah, the, what, what leave me a little bit unsatisfied is just the ending. Um, of course, this is a really big book to adapt, so I think it will make much sense to split into two. Um, so, yeah, folks. Um, uh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe if you want me. If if you want me, just uh, giving you some more content. And uh, yeah, without that, say my name is Rasputin Afoslav. And uh, I wanted to say a few words before the end of this year. Um, I wanted to say to all of you Merry Christmas. Uh, and in case I won't upload anything from these days, uh, Happy New Year. Um, please take care of your family, take care of yourselves. Um, just if you have friends, just tell them as well Merry Christmas. Just, ju just go outside, just enjoy your life. I know there, the, this this crazy world that we live on with the this virus happening, you know, impeding us to go outside and join our lives. And don't don't let this affect you, okay? Just live your life. Just just don't don't care much about this shit, okay? <sighs> anyway, folks. Um, Again, thank you so much for watching and uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I'll see you in another video like this one. Stay awesome, stay safe and be cool.